Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, we're gonna to be making a little bit more progress on our Copo truck, and we're gonna take care of like the last major system that we have to do uh, before we can actually start driving this truck. And that's pretty awesome because we're in the middle of installing a Boost District LSA supercharger kit onto our 4.8 LS. And I wanna make hopefully somewhere right around 500 horsepower at first, and then we should have all the good solid bones and foundation to turn it way up in the future. I'll probably end up switching to a larger engine, of course, but uh, for now, I just wanna get this thing going with a 4.8. It already has you know, long tubes and cam and a few other you know, valve springs and valve train upgrades. Anyway, uh, 500 horsepower is the goal, and we're just about ready to start you know, putting it on the dyno and tuning and things like that, but there are several, there's one major system in a gazillion little things, like that's kind of some of my to-do list that I have to finish up. But the one thing that I wanna to do today is start taking care of the heat exchanger system. Um, the LSA is a factory intercooled supercharger, which is awesome because anytime you compress air, it gets warm. So, you know, air gets sucked in there and it passes up through the intercooler core. Um, we already talked about the brick that's in there in a previous upload. We did reinforce it because I am gonna be turning up the boost, but that's the only part of the heat exchanger that's installed. So we need to mount a few more components. Uh, along with the Boost District Supercharger Kit, they give you this radiator right here. This is a heat exchanger, a uh, low temp radiator. They call it several different things, but basically this is what's gonna shed all of the heat that's created by the supercharger. Now this is a separate system from the engine's cooling because you know the water that's in the radiator and all the lines and stuff, that's probably you know 180 degrees where we want that to be like 100 or 110 or 120 degrees. So it's a separate system um, and that's the radiator. And then we also have two more components that Boost District provides. We have the uh, electric pump right there. That's gonna circulate the coolant. And then we have a reservoir and that's just gonna provide a spot for air to collect and you know, get out of the system. So those are the major components. And I think we're gonna start by getting that guy mounted because that's probably gonna be the most time consuming part of this whole project. If you guys have watched my channel for any length of time, you've probably picked up on the fact that I have this really cool skill where I can take a project that's pretty simple and transform it into something that takes like four or five times longer than it normally should and is really over-engineered and elaborate and is just kind of this ridiculous over-the-top design. But I'm tooting my own horn here. Usually by the time I'm done with these kind of fabrication projects, I'm left with something that in my opinion looks just like the factory could have designed it. That's my whole objective. That's my whole build philosophy is I hate sticking stuff on that looks like it doesn't belong. And not to like call anybody out, but I've seen a lot of installs where like, say you install a trans cooler with some of that, um, that like, I don't know what it's called, but like the plumbing stuff you use to hang pipes in the house, like that flexible steel strap with holes in it. Like I've seen guys use that stuff and it, don't get me wrong, it works in a pinch, but in my opinion, that's not how I want to do things. So um, this, is, this project is no different. We're gonna kind of get elaborate here. So let me show you the problem, some of the solutions that you could use and the solution that I'm gonna take, which of course is the one that's gonna take the longest. Um, this whole thing is the case of like not enough space, you know, 10 pounds of stuff in a five pound box. There's just not a lot of space in front of the grill or in front of the transmission cooler on these 99 to 02 Silverados. The later model 03 to 07s, there's a lot more room in those in the 2008 and newer stuff, pretty much anything to present. There's a mile of room in between the grill and the radiator. So if you've got a supercharger kit, you're going to be installing on those. You've got a ton of space. But the 99 to 02s, there's just not a lot of room. Uh, in terms of the cooling stack, we have the radiator that sits sort of underneath this beam here. We've got the AC condenser in front of that with maybe like an inch, inch and a half of gap in between there. And then we have this A-frame support that kind of holds up the hood latch and um, just kind of ties everything together. And then in front of that, we have the transmission cooler. And part of the problem is the transmission cooler sits about an yeah, inch and a half to two inches in front of the A-frame. So if I wanted to just simply build some brackets and mount the low temperature radiator in front of that, if I kind of make it just barely touch there, there's no way that the grill could fit back on the truck because it kind of sits a little bit behind where the face of the headlights is uh, or the headlights are. So basically that's not gonna work. We need to rearrange something to make enough space for the boost district radiator. 
Now, the logical thing to do here would be simply to redesign this bracket here and this bracket here to allow the transmission cooler to sit behind the front surface of the A-frame. And if we did that, we could easily have enough space to mount the big radiator up here, and we just have to do probably minor trimming of the grill. So that's sort of like the objective is to have everything else, you know, the transmission cooler included, sitting behind the front surface of this A-frame. But of course, I don't want to use the stock transmission cooler. If you have a stock torque converter, this will probably do okay, but I have a higher stall speed converter and a higher stall speed converter combined with more horsepower makes more heat in the transmission and you don't want your transmission running hot. So I'm installing a larger transmission cooler. Now I will say if you're going to attempt this project on your own and you don't want to get into the fabrication stuff that I'm about to show you, the simplest solution would be just to find sort of like a tall narrow transmission cooler that'll fit in this opening there. But I for some reason decided not to do that. I went with the classic True Cool 40K. Now this transmission cooler is the same one that I have in my other pickup and it works great like that transmission even with a ton of torque and a loose converter it stays really cool so I wanted to run this specific transmission cooler but obviously as you can tell by the shape of it there's no way to get that behind the A-frame because it you know would obviously have to be chopped off. So instead instead of mounting in front and instead of choosing a different cooler what I'm going to do is completely modify the A-frame. So I'm going to chop off the legs between here and about there, and I'm going to weld on a horizontal beam that comes all the way across here, comes down about even with the end tank of the condenser. We'll attach it to that guy there, and we'll attach it down there, and that'll give me enough space to mount the big true cool in sort of flush behind the A-frame. And then, just like before, we can mount the big radiator up front, do a little bit of trimming on the grill, and be on our way. Um, this is made from aluminum, so that's a little bit of a challenge, but I went down to the local metal mart and I picked up some one inch square aluminum, uh, 125 wall. That's just a little bit bigger than this. This is like seven eighths of an inch, but I could not find any seven eighths inch square stock aluminum. So it'll be a little bit larger, but we'll kind of weld this all together and we'll have a really awesome bracket by the time we're done.
So if you're going to try to tackle a project like this, you should know it's not necessarily difficult work because all we're really doing is just cutting and welding two back together at 90 degree angle. So it's very simple, but it does take a long time if you're going to kind of design and engineer stuff to all fit together. Um, at the end of the day, it took me probably six hours to get this whole project done, start to finish, including welding and painting. Um, but what we're left with is something that looks very simple, is understated, and it looks pretty much like the factory did it. And that's exactly what I wanted to accomplish, something that has factory looks and fit and finish. Because remember, we're doing like a quote-unquote Copo truck, and they wouldn't use that metal plumbing strap <laughs> that they sell at Home Depot. So anyway... Uh, this is what we're left with. Overall, it moves the transmission cooler back by about three inches. It now sits perfectly flush, like kind of underneath the bracket here. Now that leaves plenty of space for the heat exchanger to sit up front. It still uses all of the factory mounting positions. There's two holes here, two on the back side there, two down on that side. Um, the factory hood latch still works and it'll clear everything. So there's plenty of support because I've seen guys just kind of cut this out and leave this bolted up top. Um, but then your hood latch will kind of flop around. So I didn't want that. Um, and this is what we have. We have a removable bracket down here for the lower part of the trans cooler. And I did that just because I'm kind of installing the trans cooler backwards in order to get it to sit behind or underneath this. And that would make it kind of hard to get to the fitting. So I just made this removable instead of welding it on. Um, that'll make life easy when it comes to attaching the fittings. I made another tab over here on the outside. That's for the bottom of the uh, power steering cooler. Normally there's a little bracket that kind of popped out in the corner there, but that would have interfered with my new upright. So I got rid of that. We're gonna make just a simple cushion clamp mount on the bottom hard line there. Um, this is like really lightweight. It's not under a lot of stress or anything like that. So just a simple cushion clamp and the original mounting location up top holds that in. And beyond that, everything else will reinstall just like it did from the factory. We didn't disturb any of the headlight mounting positions. We didn't disturb any of the plastic um, trim mounts or nothing like that. So yeah, that is the finished product, guys. A um, couple notes on how I built it. When it comes to cutting the aluminum, this guy right here is a lifesaver. This is just a simple miter box. I do have a uh, 60 tooth blade on here from when I was doing some trim work at our last house. Um, but this cuts through that aluminum like butter and it doesn't even hurt the blade from what I can tell. I tried my abrasive cutoff saw, which I normally use for, you know, steel tube and stuff like that. And that makes a mess of the aluminum. It gives you a ton of cleanup work uh, where that guy, it'll buzz right through it super quick. It doesn't get hot and it leaves you with pretty much a perfect edge ready to weld. I do just take some scotch bright pads and kind of scuff up the aluminum and I degrease it before I weld. But um, super simple. The old aluminum welded perfectly to the new aluminum. Um, yeah, and that is the finished product. The only other thing I wanted to mention are the little threaded inserts. I actually went out and bought um, one of those rivnut tools, if this will focus. There we go. Uh, so that is a, the rivnut that I added. And then there's an original one right there. And they actually look kind of identical. So that's awesome. I don't like using self tappers if I can avoid it. And then I don't like putting a nut and a bolt like straight through the tube because that'll kind of collapse it as you tighten it down. So for a factory look, I just went out and bought a rib nut tool off of Amazon and I'll send you guys the link down in the description so you can check it out. I think this whole kit is like $75, maybe something like that. It comes with a whole bunch of different sizes. We have everything from an M3 to an M10. And then for American, we have a number 10 all the way up to a three eighths. Um, that's the tool itself, pretty simple. And then you've got this whole selection of inserts that they give you. Although I think there's like 10 of each. So you will have to buy extras, of course, if you wanna use this long-term, but I love this tool. It seems to work awesome. And I'm gonna use these little inserts wherever I can, anytime I'm mounting something. Um, I hate using self tappers if I can avoid them. So uh, this is an awesome solution for 75 bucks. I'm kind of kicking myself that I didn't buy it. A little bit sooner okay so from here on out we've got to get this bracket mounted up in the truck um, we'll get some of the headlight stuff reattached i'll get the transmission cooler mounted and then the next thing i want to try to take care of is building some hard lines for the trans cooler
So we did have to do just a little bit of trimming on the grill, which I kind of expected we'd have to, uh, but it's totally not a big deal. It's just all plastic. There's really no structure or anything back there, uh, but we got it all to fit, but it does make me glad I took the effort to kind of install the larger transmission cooler and then take the time to rebuild that bracket just to set everything as far back as I possibly could. Because like I said, space on these 99 to 02 trucks is definitely at a premium, but that's the finished product, guys, obviously, minus the headlights. I just kind of have the grill in for a test fit right now. Uh, but you can just kind of see how large that heat exchanger is poking through the grill. And I kind of like the look. I mean, on my last truck, I actually painted the intercooler black because I wanted it to blend in. But for this one, I don't know. I kind of like just barely being able to see the heat exchanger up front. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to pull this all apart real quick. I'll pull the grill and the upper trim cover off just so we can kind of show you guys the finished product and the final result of all of today's work. The trimming on the grill was not too bad. We took about an inch away from the outside edges and kind of drew a straight line across the center. In the very middle, we didn't have to remove any material. And then of course we had a few like bumps. Normally these kind of come to a point like that, but we had to trim a few of these down just because they're a little bit close. Uh, make a notch here and there for the end tanks. But overall, that's the trimming that we had to do. I'm gonna tidy that up just a little bit and blow off all the plastic dust, but the grill fits and the cooling stack of the truck is 100% complete. And I believe we have absolutely zero compromises in this design. And that cooling system, you know, we started the upgrades last fall when we installed the wider radiator and the dual electric fans from 2005 and newer truck. Those move a ton of air, by the way. Um, so we've got the wide radiator. We do have the original uh, AC condenser, so that works just fine. We have the new transmission cooler, which is stacked nicely underneath the support bracket that we made. Uh, I've got about three eighths of an inch of airspace in between the two, so nothing is going to rub together because you don't want that. Um, and the same thing is true, which we probably can't focus, but the same thing is true in between the trans cooler and the condenser. And then, of course, we've got the big heat exchanger up front, and I am really glad we took the time to make this big heat exchanger work because you know, we're going to be making a lot of heat, both in the engine and the air intake system and the transmission. And now we have enough cooling capacity to remove all the heat from everything. So um, this is just one of those projects, guys, where you can do this quickly or you can make this go the long way. If I would have just put a narrow transmission cooler in there, we would have had a ton of room. If I would have had a later model truck, it would have been a lot easier. But um, I like this body style of truck and I want the best cooling that we possibly can have. And thanks to Boost District, we have that. Um, so we are one major step closer to getting this truck on the road. Um, I didn't get time today to install the reservoir and the pump for the uh, rest of the cooling system, but we got most of the major work done. And I think I'll just mount the reservoir somewhere right up in here. I'll try to keep it at a similar level to the coolant expansion tank, just because obviously liquid rises and you don't want any air pockets. So you want the reservoir at like the highest possible point in the system. So I'll probably have it up here with a pump somewhere down there. And then from that point, it's just a matter of connecting hoses. And for the most part, this supercharger installation is sort of kind of done. Of course, I have a lot of like little odds and ends I have to finish up. We've got to put a throttle cable on there, build a bracket for the throttle cable. Um, we've got to do, let's see, I got to finish the wiring, which is like, it's all wired, but I still need to wrap it with loom. Um, we've got to, you know, the list goes on and on. I think I showed you this last time. So we got a lot of little things like the boost gauge. We've got to build the intake tube, you know, mount the catch can. I'll probably pin the crankshaft. So I don't know if I'll make individual videos about all that stuff. I'll probably just try to get caught up like off camera and then make a video showing you all the little things that I've done. Uh, so we are so much closer to driving this. We're not there yet, but Thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. Um, do me a favor though, like the channel, comment and subscribe because we are trying to reach 100,000 subs. Like that's my next major milestone. It's on my vision board or whatever. I want that silver play button on the wall and I need your help to make it happen. So thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate you and we'll catch you again soon.